Hello and welcome to the NPTEL MOOCs course on Design and Implementation of Human Computer Interfaces, Lecture 6 on Usability Requirement Gathering. So, we are currently discussing on the starting stage of interactive system development life cycle namely requirement gathering stage where our emphasis is on gathering usability requirements. Note that we skipped the first stage feasibility study and we started with the second stage of life cycle namely requirement gathering analysis and specification stage. So, we already learned about the idea of usability and its importance in interactive system development life cycle. In this lecture, we are going to learn about one approach through which we can gather usability requirements for building an interactive system. Just to recap, we are currently in the requirement gathering stage, we are currently discussing topics related to this stage and in this course in subsequent lectures we will cover the other stages as well. So, there are many stages in the interactive system development life cycle. First stage is feasibility study which we are not covering in details here. We are currently in the requirement gathering stage, then we have this design prototype evaluate cycle involving the design stage, prototyping stage, evaluation stage and design involves both interface design as well as code design. Then we have this coding and implementation stage, testing of the code, a final stage to again ascertain the usability of the overall system through empirical study and then finally, deployment and maintenance. So, other stages will come in subsequent part of the lecture. Currently, we are focusing on requirement gathering stage. So, in this lecture, we are going to learn about one specific approach to gather usability requirements from end user which is called contextual inquiry. So, before we go into the details, let us recall that in the conceptualization to implementation of interactive system, one very important aspect is knowledge about the user. So, we should have the motto of know the user or know the user. Here by the term user, we mean end users or layman users. And again, there is a definition for usability which we would like to recall at this stage before going further into the discussion on contextual inquiry. That is the ISO definition of usability which is the extent to which a product can be used by specified users to achieve specified goals with effectiveness, efficiency and satisfaction in a specified context of use. So, the standard definition categorically talks about specific group of users who wish to achieve specific goal in a specified context of use that is the definition of usability. So, here note the term specified context of use. So, we have to somehow capture the use context before we can think of building an usable product. So, which will be the context of use of the product along with who are the users and what are their goals. All these considerations we need to address or we need to keep in mind before we aim to build a 
usable product. Now, let us come to the main topic of this lecture that is contextual inquiry. So, this is one of many methods available to gather end user requirements for usable product development. So, this whatever outcome we get after the inquiry process is over, after the contextual inquiry process is over, those outcomes can be equated to usability requirements. And this is not the only method, but one of many such methods available to gather usability requirements. Now, the method as such is not very new. So, its importance in user centered design was highlighted way back in 1988, about more than 30 years ago, when the graphical user interfaces and the personal computers were dominating the scene. At that time, this technique used to be referred to as phenomenological research method. And by the end of the 1990s, it became well developed and quite popular to gather end user requirements. Now, the same method is often referred to as a form of semi structured interview or semi structured interview process. However, it may be somewhat misleading because contextual inquiry is not only an interview. Instead, in contextual inquiry, we have two things involved one is interview and the other one is observations. Observations are the primary method used here. Along with that, interviews are used as a supporting mechanism of observations. So, if we are simply referring to it as an interview, then that may be misleading. So, in contextual inquiry process, the primary objective is to watch and observe the users while they are performing tasks in their natural work setting or in other words the work context. So, in contextual inquiry what typically is done is that users are asked to perform their regular activities in their natural work settings and their behavior are closely observed during their regular activities. Now, during observations, the observer may ask users queries or questions to clarify certain behavioral issues or certain activities. So, during observations, the observer may note some behavior or activities which is not very clear and at that point of time, the observer or in a later time, the observer can ask the user about more clarification of the particular behavior or the activities. So, in that sense, interview acts as a supporting tool in the overall observation process. Generally, the contextual inquiry process continues for 1 to 2 hours. A longer duration may be not very desirable because the users may not like to participate in the process for more than 1 to 2 hours. And also for a longer duration observations, the observations may reveal similar things without much gain in behavioral knowledge. So, what is the purpose? Now, these observations that are made during the inquiry process, which include interactions with the users in form of interviews, enable the designers, designers of the interactive system to learn about the task domain, work culture and physical and social constraints that are prevalent 
at the workplace. So, various idiosyncratic attributes of the workplace with respect to the user behavior and participation can be learned through these observations. Now, this knowledge is very important because the designer should be aware of the specific work context which is part of the definition of usability. So, by these observations the designer can become knowledgeable about the specific work context and accordingly will be able to design usable product. In order to understand the importance of observations in the development of usable product, let us recollect our calendar app example that we mentioned in our earlier lectures. Now, suppose the target group of users are identified as the managerial staff of some organization. So, we have pinpointed the user group, they are the managerial staff of some organization and we made some observations about their behavior during their working hours. Without any knowledge about the intended user behavior, particularly in their work settings, we can come up with all sorts of possible calendar designs as we have already discussed earlier. So, earlier we discussed couple of alternatives for the design of the calendar app, but there these were done based on our intuition rather than any specific knowledge about the target user behavior. So, that is likely to be the case if we do not have any specific knowledge, we will end up with many alternatives. However, in contrast to that, suppose we now performed a contextual inquiry and observed that the intended users perform two important activities during their working hours set meeting dates and set reminders. Suppose we have observed this that they quite frequently perform these activities. Then with this knowledge when we are going to develop the calendar app, we know what features to be kept in the app so that it becomes usable to the target group of users namely the managerial staff. So, if we do not keep these features then the calendar app will not be very much usable to the intended users because they anyway perform these activities and they have to take recourse to other tools at their disposal to perform these activities. But if we keep the same as features in our calendar app then they do not need to use other tools they can directly use the app and using those features they can perform their activities. So, it will make the product more usable to that particular user group and the idea of this feature comes from observing their behavior in their work settings. So, that is the importance of having performed contextual inquiry before embarking on the design of the system. So, with that we got some idea of what is contextual inquiry. To repeat, this is an observation based approach to gather end user requirements where we observe the users in their natural work setting. And observation can be supported by unstructured interview. The observers can ask queries or questions to the users to get more clarification on certain behavior or activities that they might have observed during the contextual inquiry process. Now, the contextual inquiry can be performed in different ways. So, broadly there are two ways to perform contextual inquiry. The active mode and the 
पैसिव मोड इन द एक्टिव मोड द ऑब्जर्वर इज फिजिकली प्रेजेंट इन द वर्क सेटिंग वेयर द यूजर्स आर बींग ऑब्जर्व सो ऑब्जर्वर इज फिजिकली प्रेजेंट एंड कैप्चर द ऑब्जर्वेशन इन सम फॉर्म आइदर हैंड रिटर्न नोट्स और वीडियोग्राफी और समथिंग विच एवर द ऑब्जर्वर फील्स कम्फर्टेबल विथ ही और सी कैप्चर द ऑब्जर्वेशन इन पैसिव मोड द ऑब्जर्वर इज नॉट फिजिकली प्रेजेंट इंस्टेड द यूजर एक्टिविटीज आर रेकॉर्डेड और वीडियो टेप्ड एंड द ऑब्जर्वर रिव्यूज दोज वीडियोज और रेकॉर्डिंग्स एट अ लेटर टाइम सो इन एक्टिव मोड ऑब्जर्वर्स आर फिजिकली प्रेजेंट एंड ऑब्जर्व इन पैसिव मोड सम सेटअप इज यूज टू रेकॉर्ड यूजर एक्टिविटीज एंड दोज रेकॉर्डिंग्स आर ऑब्जर्व लेटर बाई द ऑब्जर्वर वन क्रूसियल थिंग टू नोट हेयर इज दैट कॉन्टेक्चुअल इंक्वायरी इज नॉट अबाउट लेक्चरिंग द यूजर वाट टू डू एंड वाट नॉट टू डू हेयर ड्यूरिंग द इंक्वायरी ऑब्जर्वर शूड एक्ट एज एप्रेंटिस और ट्रेनिज एंड ट्रीट द यूजर्स एज मास्टर्स सो दिस मास्टर एप्रेंटिस मॉडल इज अ क्वाइट पॉपुलर मॉडल टू परफॉर्म कॉन्टेक्चुअल इंक्वायरी हेयर इट इज एज्यूम दैट द यूजर्स आर मास्टर्स एंड द ऑब्जर्वर्स नीड टू लर्न फ्रॉम द यूजर्स सो दे शुड एक्ट एज एप्रेंटिस फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ लर्निंग फ्रॉम द यूजर्स लर्निंग देयर बिहेवियर सो पर्पज इज टू लर्न फ्रॉम यूजर्स देयर बिहेवियर रादर देन टू टीच देम हाउ टू बिहेव इन अ वर्क सेटिंग सो ऑकेशनली देयर मे बी अ टेंडेंसी इन द ऑब्जर्वर्स टू टीच और लेक्चर द यूजर्स अबाउट हाउ टू डू थिंग्स वाइल दे आर ऑब्जर्विंग यूजर बिहेवियर so this should be strictly avoided now let us learn about different stages so contextual inquiry can be thought of as consisting of multiple stages of activities there are broadly five stages what are those five stages first stage is plan then the second stage is initiate then we have execute then close and finally reflect so there are five stages plan initiate execute close and reflect so what is the plan stage so here we generally create a plan on what to do or what are the things that we need to do so it involves identification of the goals of observation so what we want to observe knowledge gathering about task domain some prior knowledge also arrangements for recording the observations how to record the behavior identification of users and the date time and place of observation so identification of observational setup and users all these can be converted to a script and can be rehearsed many times before the actual observation takes place so that it is smoothly done so all these are part of the first stage that is planning stage planning for observation in the second stage or initiate stage although it may look simple but this is very important and crucial phase of the contextual inquiry here we need to contact the authorities for permission and open communication with the end users so that they willingly participate in the observation process so occasionally if we simply drop in and ask them to let us observe then people may not agree so some sort of 
communication should be established between the end users and the observers before the observation takes place so that the users become confident and allows the observers to observe them during their working. This also requires prior permission from the management staff which needs to be obtained. The third stage is the actual data collection stage. In this stage observation takes place and data collected. The fourth stage is the close stage. Like initiate this is also a very important stage although it may look simple and trivial. Here generally the observation is ended with a thank you note sent to all the participants along with the authorities because if this type of initiatives are not taken then later on suppose the data turned out to be insufficient and you need to collect more data or later on in during the empirical study stage you need to engage the same users for empirical study. They may not agree if this closed stage is not properly done. The fifth and final stage is the reflect stage. In this stage the data that we have collected through observations are analyzed to identify the design goals. Now this is not easy at all as we shall soon see with examples. Why? Because there may be lots of data and going through this data to identify specific design goals are generally not very trivial. We can make use of tools and techniques available to analyze the data and find out design goals. One such technique is the affinity diagram method. Let us quickly have a look at the method and how it can help in analyzing the data. Now this method contains 5 steps. What are those steps? Generate idea, display ideas, sort ideas into groups, create group header by group header it means the create names for each group and finally draw the finished affinity diagram. So the method involves these five stages generate idea, display idea, sort ideas into group, create group name or header and finalize the diagram. Let us try to understand these stages in the form of an example. Suppose we are trying to build a class note taking application which is primarily meant for college going students. So we have performed contextual inquiry to identify the end user requirements so that the application is usable and we are now trying to make use of the affinity diagram method to identify the design goals for this particular application. Let us assume that CI is already done and some observations are recorded. Now to record observations let us assume that three tools have been used to study the behavior. A physical pen and paper based note taking, one web application notion.so so, and journal plus plus desktop software. These three tools have been used, two computer based tool and one pen and paper based traditional note taking have been used to observe and record user behavior 
during actual classes or the actual work setting. Now, these observations we want to analyze using the affinity diagram method. So, let us see how affinity diagram method can help us analyze the observations. So, among the 5 steps let us concentrate now on the first two that is generate ideas and display ideas. So, suppose we have collected some notes during our observation in this form sticky note form. So, one observation is multi level organization of notes not possible that is one observation we made during our contextual inquiry phase. Another observation may be freehand drawing is not accurate during note taking drawing may be part of it, but freehand drawing generally is found to be not very accurate or of high quality. A third observation that is made is navigation between different topics is cumbersome. Fourth observation content relocation not possible in physical note taking approach. Of course, something written somewhere is not possible to move to some other page because that is the limitation of pen and paper based approach. A fifth observation difficult to search keywords in notes. Another observation cannot insert any images. All these observations are written down as notes with sticky notes and may be pasted on a wall for analysis that is a traditional approach for brainstorming with the observations. Note number 7 erasing contents is a difficult and daunting task that is another observation made by the observers. Sorting of lectures by dates is torturous yet another observation made by the observers. One note says incorporating mathematical symbols not supported by one of the tools probably that is not specified, but this is one note written down to record observation. Text formatting should be handy again with respect to probably one of the two computer based tools used to observe behavior. Organization of course wise notes difficult that is another observation. So, many observations have been made. So, this is only a subset of all possible observations that could have been made with respect to the three tools and user behavior. This is just to give some idea of what is meant by data collected during the observational phase. So, these are the data that we collected in the form of handwritten notes. It can also be in the form of video and handwritten notes after reviewing the video. Now, so many notes are or the observations are recorded. So, what we need to do now? We need to display the ideas. So, this is one way of displaying the ideas. So, these ideas are pasted on some surface can be wall can be whiteboard. So, that other team members who are part of analysis of the data can have a look and then give in their comments or feedbacks. The third stage is sort the observations into groups third stage of the affinity diagram method is sort it into groups. That means, behavioral observations that are similar in nature should be sorted into groups. So, among these observations that have been listed what are or which of the observations can be considered to be similar which can be then put together into a group. Let us see. So, these two observations 
multi level organization of notes not possible and sorting of lectures by dates torturous can be considered to belong to same type of behavior so that these can be put in a single group. Similarly, organization of course wise notes difficult belongs to the same group. Now, these two notes navigation between different topics cumbersome and difficult to search keywords in notes points to similar problem faced by users during their activities and can be considered to be pointing to same issue in the design. Again content relocation not possible in physical pen and paper waste method and erasing content is a daunting task again implicitly refers to similar problems faced by users. So, they can be considered to belong to the same group of observations. So, in this way from the display of the ideas we can try to correlate the observations and then put them into some group. In step 4 these groups are assigned some names or some headers. For example, these three observations sorting of notes by dates is torturous, multi level organization of notes not possible, organization of course wise notes difficult. These three observations can be clubbed together into a single group with a header navigation in notebook or notebook application. So, in step 4 we assign the header to this group of observations and the header actually gives us some idea of the issues, the design issues or the usability issues that need to be addressed to make the product usable. Two more groups that we have seen earlier comprising of one group comprising of these two observations and this is the header. The observations are difficult to search keywords in notes and navigation between different topics is cumbersome. So, these two observations are combined together into a group with a header navigation in notes. Similarly, erasing contents is a daunting task and content relocation not possible in physical or pen and paper based note taking approach. These two observations can be considered to belong to the same group and a header is assigned to it namely note organization. So, in this way we group different observations together and assign them headers. So, that is the fourth step in the affinity diagram method. The fifth step is once the headers are assigned and the observations are grouped we again display or draw the final drawing. So, all these notes are now grouped say for example, these three are grouped together with this header, these five are grouped together with this header, these two are grouped together with header, another group with header, there are four observations in this group with header and three observations in another group with header. So, there are total 19 observations made after the contextual inquiry. Of course, this is a small number in practice it can be hundreds and then these observations are put into 6 groups. So, 19 
observations, 6 groups and for each group one header is assigned, so 6 headers. So, that is the outcome of the analysis method. So, to repeat we first generate ideas after observations or during observations. If it is active mode then during observations we generate ideas, if it is passive mode then after observation during reviewing of the recordings we generate those ideas. Then we display them in some manner maybe on some surface, then brainstorm in a team to sort similar observations into groups and then assign some headers to those groups. So, these groups with headers, the set of all these groups with headers is the outcome of the method. So, what to do with this outcome? We can come up with a set of design recommendations. For example, in this case in the note taking application case based on the observations that we have made we can come up with a recommendation such as for correcting mistakes there should be a provision to erase the content. This would help in keeping the notes neat and tidy. This can be one design guideline provided to the designer which is likely to take into account users concerns and make it usable. How we can say that? We can say because we have collected these requirements through user observations in a contextual inquiry method which is a usability requirement gathering technique. We can actually also come up with some functional requirements by converting these type of design rationals as we shall see in later lectures. One thing to be noted here is that here we are not talking about how to take into account this design recommendation, how to implement it rather what we are talking about here is what we need. So, our objective is what we need to make the design usable rather than how to implement the particular thing that we need. So, the outcome of affinity diagram method is set of design rationals or it may lead to set of functional requirements. So, in our subsequent lectures we will see what is functional requirement and how it is important in system design. So, affinity diagram output can be used to come up with functional requirements which will take care of usability requirements implicitly. So, that is all for today's topic. So, what we learned? We learned about contextual inquiry, what it is and how it is done. We also learned about how to analyze the data that we have collected or we collect during contextual inquiry. I would like to repeat again. So, contextual inquiry is not an interview only, it is primarily an observation to observe user behavior in their work setting and semi structured interview can be used as a supporting tool to get clarifications on certain user behaviors or activities that is noted during observation. We have also got some idea of how to analyze the data through the affinity diagram method. Whatever we have covered can be found in this book. You are requested to refer to chapter 2 section 2.4.3 of this book. That is all for this lecture. Hope you have learned the topic and enjoyed it. Thank you and goodbye. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.